You're listening to the Hockey Podcast Network. New shows every day. Find us at thehockeypodcastnetwork.com or wherever you get your podcasts from. topics we wanted to talk about uh, we go back to uh, performance arts first question of the night uh, the red wings been canceled um again at least for this week maybe for um maybe for friday we we do come back but like i said i'm not holding my breath but mike no yes with max bolton reporting that that uh, red wings game against the isles was postponed i asked everybody on twitter uh, or actually i threw out this comment i just wanted everybody's opinion uh is, is this a potential silver lining here mike uh, the possibility to play more games if they're rescheduled you know sometime around the olympic break play more games with a fully healed and energized squad mike does this give us enough time to play more games with mr Jakob ferrana <laughs> I hope so. Um, I don't know if it just means there's a couple week window where they're looking at the Olympics and they're just going to try and, sh- you know, shove all those games in there. Uh, but if there's any kind of opportunity that they're just going to like extend the end of the 2021, 2022 season, that's where it could get really interesting for the Red Wings. Uh, you know, as Iserman's kind of doing the math and seeing that oh, we're gonna have Verona maybe back for more games than we previously anticipated. Um, you know, and if, my God, Matt, we're still hovering around that eight, nine spot, you know, and the Red Wings for the first time in God, I don't know, six or seven years, we're actually maybe sort of thinking about buying, be buyers at a trade deadline. If you're going to pick up somebody, I'm looking at you, Hurdle. Hurdle and, uh, Verona coming back. It's, it just kind of opens that up. It opens that up because you get to see Verona actually play this season. Um, so I think that's that's kind of where my head's at, which is pie in the sky because I I don't know if Weiserman's ever, you know, if he's really thinking about uh, buying this season. He's probably still waiting a year or two, another first, you know, top um, first round pick or two before going that route. But, you know, we kind of broke out of that shell this year looking at uh, when now moves. Um, okay. I, that's pie in the sky, man. But I, I like where you brought this question up in the first place. It's all about Veron. Yeah, I like there. There's some of that that conversation to say, like, um, or to bring up the point that Lucas Raymond is out now. So maybe we do want to hope that the the Capitals game just gets postponed, so we get Lucas Raymond back um, and get and just get past whatever's going on right now. Get everybody back. They figure out what they're going to do COVID-wise, like with the rules, because um, things do seem to be evolving quite a bit here very quickly. So as they figure that out, we can keep postponing games and get our team healthier. Um, now, I did, uh, you know, everybody was asking Max after I threw out that tweet. Um, Max is putting out, and, uh, the uh, surgery date was September 30th. They said at the earliest, uh, you know, it was four months. So that would mean at the beginning of February. Really, it would mean January 30th, but it would mean, you know, probably early February, which would put us right in that realm, uh, like a week before those games are rescheduled. Uh, so I, there's there's a great possibility Verona could be back. Uh, Max did hint that they're supposed to be giving us a, a, a more significant update soon uh, while we were tweeting at them. And we'll just, you know, we'll kind of hope for the best when that does come around. But I, I would say... As angry as we can be that we aren't getting our Red Wings hockey, number one, we talked about this, uh, what, a week? Oh, actually, a week ago, exactly. Um, While nobody knows what's going on, I'm going to be okay with them saying we're going to figure it out in the meantime and have these fudgy rules and just keep postponing games. But the other part of this, for Red Wings fans... If you were looking for a playoff spot this year, if you want to see this team do as well as possible standing in the standings, um, which I know there are some folks out there that would just prefer we tank. But if you're not one of those folks that wants us to tank, there's your silver lining. We get closer to Jakob Vrana's return. And all of these games we're missing right now, which would have been played with a shortened bench, uh, could have 
Jakob Verana included. Um, Mike, I mean, that, that could absolutely be huge. You get probably two power plays that have a little bit more. It's, instead of one power play that gets you, you know, middle of the pack kind of percentage, bottom third, I should say, pack, uh, maybe, maybe you jump up to the middle of the league. And then, uh, of course, you're talking two lines that can score. Um, you have a, a top six. That's at least respectable. Adding Jakob Verana in there. I, I think there's a lot to be said for that. And, um, you know, we're, we're just talking about guys that we want to draft, right? Um, we get further away from that conversation, which does kind of stink because we are nowhere near having a core being complete <laughs> on the offensive side. We maybe have two guys a part of the core from the offensive side. But I there, there's still something where there's room for adjustments. There's room for my own mind to pivot from, you know, how far away are we from, from being a playoff contender? Uh, if, if we can just see what this team looks like for a, an extended period of time with Verana and maybe we see Verana and, you know, we win for a couple of weeks and then somebody else goes down with an injury and we end the season, you know, in the, in the bottom third of the league. But if we could see what this team looks like for a couple of weeks with Verona, I'm going to be very happy with that. And the more games we have with that possibility, it, it's just uh, an a, a plus for me. Yeah, I mean, so much of this hinges on our performance here because <clears throat> we still have to watch Boston catch up to us game-wise. And so this is all potentially going to be a mood, a mood point. Uh, we still have, you know, away games against Canada. Uh, we know how rough the Red Wings uh, win-loss disparity has been. Uh, from Little Caesars to anywhere outside of Little Caesars Arena, um, then I mean, like, you're one or two injuries away from just, poof, that's it. Because um, we know how top-heavy this this team is. So, you know, when we lose Bertuzzi, it's it's devastating. Um, God forbid if something happened to, you know, Mo Sider and he just had, like, a tweak, you know, that means, you know, your best defenseman who handles power play, penalty kill, five-on-five, five, uh, you know, top lines. Woof! I hate so that I'm just put that into the world. <laughs> so I'm just saying that you know we we have our pie in the sky dream. If if things are still going well, we're still like a little bit above 500. You know, we can see Iserman kind of get the gleam in his eye. Like maybe we could buy this year. Maybe we got Verona coming back. Um, this opens the door, but just a, a lot of things have to go right to get to that point. So I just you know want to be cognizant of that. But Vettar thrown in there too. Um, other yeah. teams will also be healing up, but it would be exciting to see him in the lineup. Absolutely, absolutely, fit there. Yeah. yeah, I think I think that's where uh, that's where we got to keep our heads level. Like, um, it's not about it's not about us healing beyond everybody else, but I think healing to that point of adding a guy who's been, you know, should have arguably been on our top line and putting him back in the lineup is is going to be huge. And I, you know, and you know, another part about that too, another element that we're missing is how well Lucas Raymond is playing right now with the weight of the world on his shoulders, Mike. <laughs> Think about, he's been the one guy on that first line that's been there every night. And uh, that's not something you want from your rookies. I think this would take a ton of pressure off Lucas and give him more of an opportunity to, to see what's going on the ice, learn a little bit more and take that pressure of like, I, you know, who, who knows how hard he's gripping his stick right now to, to try and keep up the pace that he's at um, where it's as Steve has, has said in the past, you know, scoring does come naturally. We know, you know, if we want to pick up a score, if we were picking up a playmaker, Steve has said, you know, in the past that those are those things that you, you like, that's your, that's your talent. And then what you've got to build up is that ability to be a good two way, whatever side of the puck you're, if you know, forward or defenseman. And that's where Steve wants to focus. And a lot of that could probably just come back to the conversation of making sure that the young guys are always learning. And you got to ask, you know, when Lucas Raymond is out there and needs to score when he's on the ice, because we have another nine guys that are forwards that we can't really count on. Um, that, that does have to cut into the learning curve a little bit. And I think that's fair to say. Um, well, I think right. uh, this, this will probably be a good segue to, uh... I thought you still had one more question that we were going to look at today. Oh, uh, one one quick thing. Uh, performance art throwing out there. It's good breather for the rookies. That's the only silver lining in this mess. Um, I still, 
I still like my, that's a great point, performance art. I still say uh, getting us closer to that Yaka Verana and having a few extra games with the potential to have Verana in the lineup. Feels I think that's uh that'll be an interesting point. Um, I think we'll kind of want to look at, you know, obviously Lucas and Mo are doing fantastic. I'd be kind of interested to see how this pans out. Um, if they still end up doing, you know, the full 82 games to kind of see how rookies this year compare to other years, you know, getting, I know that they're losing games if they go into COVID protocol, but like on a per game basis, you know, they always hit that rookie wall. Um, mm -hmm. I'd be interested to kind of see with the extra breaks, um, like how productive they are on the return. So I think performance are, that's a really interesting point.